Our lesson today, we're going to begin with a passage in Matthew chapter 5. Our society as a whole has rejected the idea that we can identify anyone's chosen behavior as being wrong or being sinful. And because of this, there are a lot of practices that have become common or accepted in our culture today that at one point, and sometimes not that long ago, were considered to be shameful and something that no one wanted to be associated with, were widely recognized as being wrong. But now with our culture shifting and public opinion on certain things that is changing, you have things that were once seen as being shameful as a whole, and now those who would identify these behaviors as sinful, if we point these things out from the Bible as being sinful, then we would be labeled as being intolerant or that we have that we are bigoted or something of something to that effect. And the passage that we're going to look at in Matthew chapter five, Jesus talked about judging. And those who would try to say that we should not pass judgment on anyone, that we should not condemn someone's chosen behavior or lifestyle, sometimes they will try to turn the scriptures around on those who are trying to uphold the moral code or the moral standards of scripture. They'll try to turn the scriptures around them on them and say, well, look, Jesus said that you are not supposed to judge. And it's this passage in Matthew chapter 7. Now, the Bible has some things to say in Matthew chapter 7 and some other passages as well that we're going to look at that talk about judging and talking about talk about being judged. So I want us to, in this lesson, consider what the Bible has to say about this. And we're going to begin by looking at this passage in Matthew chapter 5, because this is where a lot of people want to go to, to say that we cannot judge others. And what they mean by that is we cannot identify anyone's behavior as sinful. What does the Bible have to say about all of these things? Well, we're going to talk about judging and being judged. <clears throat> and this passage we're starting with in Matthew chapter 5, or excuse me, Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. Jesus said, Do not judge, so that you will not be judged. For the way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, Let me take the speck out of your eye, and behold, the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Now, what's interesting is that when you, when people use this passage to say that we cannot judge others for some behavior or some sin, they won't quote the whole passage. They won't cite the whole passage or the context that we read. They want to just talk about the very first part of it. Do not judge. And that's sufficient for them. And they make their own definition and, and, and interpret that any way that they want to. It's important that we understand the context of Jesus' words when he says, do not judge. Because some people want to take that and say that it is wrong because of what Jesus said there to make any kind of judgment at all. But that wasn't Jesus' point. That's not what he was saying in that passage, and that's clear when we look at the rest of the things that he said there. Jesus' point was that we are to not judge, or judge others hypocritically, that we are condemning them for the speck that is in their own eye, but we don't notice the log that is in our eye, that we have something that needs to be corrected, but we're not paying attention to that. We only want to look at what other people need to correct. Jesus said, no, you need to take care of yourself first. Look to yourself first. First, take the log out of your own eye. Paul said over in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5 that we are to examine ourselves. If there are corrections that we need to make in our life, we start there. That's where we begin. We make whatever corrections are necessary in our life. And then once we do that, 
Jesus said, then you will be able to see clearly to help your brother to take the speck out of his eye. Jesus didn't say, ignore the speck that is in your brother's eye. He said, you make sure that you take care of yourself, take the log out of your eye, and then, then you help your brother take the speck out of his eye. When he, when he talked about that taking the log out of your eye, where you can see clearly, he's talking about being of a maturity, a spiritual maturity that we recognize what is right and wrong. We're practicing what is right and avoiding what is wrong. Paul talked about this same type of maturity over in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1. And he says there in Galatians 6 and verse 1, Brethren, if any if anyone is caught in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Each one of you looking to yourselves so that you too will not be tempted. Notice he didn't say, you who are spiritual, just ignore the, the sin that someone else is committing because that, that's not your place to judge them. No, he says, you who are spiritual, you restore that person. Helping them and bringing them back to the truth necessarily requires us to, quote, judge them because we have to recognize that they are in sin and need correction. Otherwise, we can never help them. We can never offer the correction that they need. So Jesus' point in that passage, and so many people want to just quote the very beginning, do not judge. What Jesus' point actually was in that passage was get your heart right first. And then once you do that, then you will be in a position to be able to see clearly and you can be able to help others make the corrections that they need to make. And so he's not saying don't identify anyone's sin and try to help them get out of their sin. He's saying you need to judge yourself first. Then you can help others. The scriptures talk about there are basically two standards of judgment. This is described in a couple different passages in the Gospel of John. When we pass judgment on others... We are using one of two standards of judgment. We are either either using the judgment of the world or we're using the judgment that we could say is of God or is from his standard. The judgment of the world, Jesus described that in John chapter 8. John chapter 8 and verse 15. Where in that passage, he said, You judge according to the flesh. I'm not judging anyone. In that context... He's talking about how they, the Pharisees who were opposed to him, they were judging according to the flesh. Well, in that context, Jesus identified himself in verse 12 as being the light of the world. In verse 13, the Pharisee said to him, you are testifying about yourself. Your testimony is not true. They were judging Jesus as being incorrect or really they would identify him as a blasphemer, claiming to be something he was not, claiming to be God himself. He was, but they believed he wasn't. So they thought he was a liar. They thought he was a blasphemer. They were judging according to the flesh, as Jesus said there. They were using the world standard, not God's standard. And so that led them to reject Jesus. They were making judgment based upon their own assumptions about who Jesus was, who the Messiah would be. They were letting their biases come through. They were not basing this on truth. The other standard of judgment is judgment that is of God, which means the judgments that we make would be according to his standard that he has revealed to us. Jesus said over in John chapter 7, In verse 24, he says, Do not judge according to appearance, or to use the language that we saw in chapter 8 and verse 15, according to the flesh. Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Notice that with what Jesus said here, we cannot take what he said in Matthew 7 and use it the way some people want to use it to say we can't ever pass any judgments. No, that passage was about not judging hypocritically. And Jesus said here in John chapter 7 and verse 24, 
you judge with righteous judgment. He said this is what you must do. This type of judgment must be made. And judging this way, judging with righteous judgment, <clears throat> leads one to accept Jesus. In John chapter 7 and verse 15, the Jews were astonished, saying, How has this man become learned, having never been educated? There were people who didn't understand how Jesus could say the things that he did, how he could teach the things that he was teaching. In verse 20, the crowd answered, You have a demon who seeks to kill you. After Jesus said that you were seeking my life, and people didn't understand what he was saying. His point there in verse 24 is that you judge with righteous judgment. That will lead you to understand who I am and what I'm saying and the claims that I am making and the things that are happening, the miracles that are being performed. You're going to understand these things. You'll be able to put these things together and understand the truth. This judgment is about determining what is true and what is right. It's not about taking our assumptions and biases like the first type of judgment. But this is about eliminating any preconceptions that we have and simply seeking to get to what is true. Understand what is right, regardless of what we may have thought about things before. We have to get, get to where we are looking for the truth. Judge with righteous judgment. We should not make judgments based upon what we think, but judge based upon what is right. Now, there's another aspect to judging that we need to, we need to take into consideration here. We judge based upon what is right. But James chapter 2 and verse 13 tells us that there is something else we need to consider. That we judge based upon what is right, but we also, while we are judging based upon what is right, we are also showing mercy. James chapter 2 and verse 13. James says, For judgment will be merciless to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Here in this passage, James described the fact that we will be judged by God. In the verse we read in verse 13, judgment will be merciless to the one who shows no mercy, implying that we are going to be judged. And he says in verse 12, so speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. We are going to be judged by God. That law of liberty, he used that same language, that same phrase in chapter 1 and verse 25. It's referring to the word of God. We are going to be judged by his word. Jesus said in John 12, 48, the word that I spoke is what will judge you in the last day. So that's the standard that we have, that we are going to be judged by. And so James says here that, that if you know that's the standard that you're going to be judged by, speak and act as those who will be judged by the law of liberty, by the law of God, according to his standard. So he says that if you show no mercy, then you're not going to be shown mercy. In other words, if we are taking a different standard that God has not given and condemning others based upon that other standard, a human standard, one that we have made or that others have made, but it's not one that came from God. If we're judging based upon that rather than showing mercy to others, James says that you're not going to receive mercy. We have no right to judge or condemn others by a human standard. In Matthew chapter 15, Jesus confronted the Pharisees after they questioned why Jesus' disciples did not wash their hands before they ate bread. Well, it might seem like a reasonable thing and a good thing to wash your hands before you eat. The problem was they were saying, this is a requirement and you sin if you don't do this. Now, what it was was not a sin against the law of God. It didn't violate his law. But they weren't keeping the tradition of the elders. They were taking that standard and saying, well, you have to follow this standard or else you are guilty of sin. They were condemning others based upon human standards, not God's standard. And Jesus said that when you teach as doctrines the precepts of men there in that passage, you make your worship and your service to God vain or worthless. We are going to be judged by God. And if we hold others 
to a standard that is not his, then we're going to be held accountable for that. Also, if we don't show mercy, we are not going to be shown mercy by God. Again, going back to Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, a little bit before where Jesus said, do not judge or you will be judged. And his point was, don't make hypocritical judgments. He talks about this idea of showing mercy to others. And in Matthew chapter 6, he shows how this is tied to how God is going to deal with us. How we treat others and how we judge or condemn or are willing to forgive or not, that is going to be tied into how God will deal with us. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, he says, For if you forgive others for their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, your Father, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. He said at the beginning there of the Sermon on the Mount there in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 5, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Those who are unmerciful then, they would not receive mercy. If we are not willing to show mercy, if we're not willing to forgive others, if we are holding others to another standard besides God's, we're judging hypocritically. God will hold us accountable for that. Now, when we talk about, or when James talks about showing mercy and Jesus talks about being merciful, this does not mean that we are tolerant of what God has defined as sin or error that is contrary to his word. Over in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 11, it says we are not to have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. So what this is, what Jesus' point is, and what James' point was, is not that, well, if someone's in sin, you just ignore that because you need to show mercy. No, instead, what they are talking about, what these passages mean is that we need to assume the best of others rather than being quick to condemn them. We don't rush to judgment based upon appearances. Again, we judge with righteous judgment, as John 7 and verse 24 said that we read earlier in the lesson. Don't judge according to appearance. Judge with righteous judgment. Not according to our assumptions or our biases, but according to what is true and what is right, what is found in the Word of God. Back in that passage in James chapter 2, he began that chapter in verse 1, talking about how they were to be fair with others, how they were to treat others equally. He said there in verse 1 of James 2, My brethren, do not hold your faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ with an attitude of personal favoritism. Don't show preference to one over the other. That's not how God deals with us. God is willing to welcome any who will come to him. Those who fear God and do what is right are welcome to him. Acts chapter 10, 34 and 35 says, we need to see people as God sees them. God's willing to accept people. God is willing to welcome people to him. We need to do the same thing and not push people away or condemn people because of appearances, because of human standards, because of assumptions or biases that we have. We are to show mercy and not push people away when they have done nothing that is contrary to the will of God, where they need to come and follow God. And that's what we should want them to be doing. And then we need to, when we think about judging and being judged, and we've talked about this a little bit as we've gone through the lesson, God is going to judge us. We need to remember that we will stand before him in judgment. That passage in James 2 that we read in verse 12, he said, So speak and so act as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. He talked about this some more and connected it with this idea of mercy, as we've been talking about, in James chapter 5, verses 11 and 12, where he said in those verses, We count those blessed who endured. You have heard of the endurance of Job and have seen the outcome of the Lord's dealings, that the Lord is full of compassion and is merciful. So we see God is one who is full of mercy. And then he says in verse 12, But above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but your yes is to be yes and your no is to be no, so that you may not fall under judgment. God is full of compassion and is merciful, as it said in James 5.11. And in the very next verse, he reminds us, God is going to judge us. 
We don't want to fall under judgment or under condemnation. God will hold us accountable. But what this means is because God is a God of mercy. If we sin, we are not just left without hope that we have, if we commit one sin, or even if we have lived a certain period of time with not following God, not being faithful to Him, as long as we have life, as long as we are still here on the earth, we still have hope. We can still make things right. In 2 Peter 3 and verse 9, Peter said that God is not willing or wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. God wants us to come to Him. God wants us to make things right when we have sinned. But if we do continue in sin and we don't repent of that, God will hold us accountable. The very next verse, Peter said, the day of the Lord will come. It will come like a thief. And that day is the day we will stand before the Lord in judgment, as other passages talk about, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10 and others. And if we are not right with the Lord, we will receive the punishment that we deserve. Notice what the Hebrew writer talked about, as he talk, or what he said as he talked about this in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 26 through 29. He said, If we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a terrifying expectation of judgment and the fury of fire which will consume the adversary. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much severer punishment do you think he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded as unclean the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has insulted the Spirit of grace? We think about what the Hebrew writer says here. What what punishment do you think someone deserves? The law of Moses, there was what we think of as harsh punishments, that sometimes people were put to death for their sins. What about if we reject Christ? Jesus has now come. He's offered his life, died on the cross for us. The Holy Spirit has come and has brought the gospel for us and revealed the will of God so we can know what is right. And then we go on sinning willfully. There's not another sacrifice coming. Jesus was the sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice. There's not another sacrifice coming. If we reject him, if we reject his sacrifice, we reject his word, what hope do we have? We will receive the punishment that we deserve if we continue in our sin. But God, he's a merciful God. He's willing to welcome us back if we will repent. But if we don't, he's also a just God. It's mercy and judgment. He will hold us accountable. He will punish us for our sins. So as we wrap all this up, we've talked about different passages that that deal with the idea of judging how we are to judge others, how we are to not judge others, and how the Bible talks about that. And in all of this, why we show mercy, why we why we have that as an attitude. As we try, we are trying to help people. We are trying to do what is right and help others do what is right. But we show mercy because we're trying to follow God's standard. We know we're going to answer to Him. We are all in need of God's mercy. And He has extended that mercy to us. That's how we have hope. And so, since He has extended that mercy to us, we should do the same to others. Not hold others to an unreasonable standard. That is something beyond what God has said. Not condemn others based upon something that is not in his word. Not pass judgment upon others based upon appearances. But act with mercy toward others. God has extended mercy to us. We are to show the same mercy to others. But, as we've seen, we will still be judged by God's standard. And so we need to conform to God's standard, follow His will. But others are going to be judged by God's standard too. And so we need to encourage others and try to help others also conform to His will. We do that with fear. We do that with respect. We do that with mercy. But we do try to turn people to God. We do try to direct people to Him and to His Word and to His standard, not to our opinions, 
not to what some group of, of men have said, but what God says, what his word has said, because that's the standard of judgment. And so we show mercy to others. We don't judge others hypocritically. We don't judge others based upon another standard, but we also don't just sit back and just say that, well, you know, we can't say what, what they're doing is wrong. If the Bible identifies something as wrong, then it is wrong. And people will be held accountable for it regardless of what our society thinks about it. Our society is changing. It continues to change. Sometimes we, we think about you know, how much has changed over the last 10 years, 20 years, 50 years. Well, it could look a lot different 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 50 years from now. Our society is going to keep changing. God's word does not change. And so he's going to hold us accountable to that standard. We need to follow his will. And we need to help others do the same by letting them know what the will of God is, by helping direct them to the truth. But we cannot do that while judging hypocritically or judging according to appearances. So we need to help others. We need to guide them to the truth. But we have to avoid this wrong type of judging that Jesus talked about and follow the instructions that James said about how we are to judge, how we are to show mercy. We need to follow those instructions as well. So let's all remember what is the standard. The standard is the Word of God. Let's make sure that we are following it, that we examine ourselves. Jesus said, find the log that is in your own eye. Examine yourself. Find what needs to change and fix it. Whatever is not according to the will of God, make it conform to his will. And then once we do that, then we will be in a position to better able to help others see the truth, accept the truth, so that they can also follow the Lord as well.